Hi everyone, your Chess Puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. This game never ends. Somehow, somewhere, there are always games being played, banning many tournaments across the world. For obvious reasons, other than the 2020 candidates, maybe I need to draw your attention to the Premier League of Season 17. In the Top Chess Engine Championship, this league is split in two. And it is reserved for the very best engines. We have today a brand new Stockfish, or if you like the modified version, to be able to compete effectively in this league. Stockfish's rival is Houdini. Houdini is the only engine that has not moved forward in the way in any way. It was a very strong engine a few years ago. But as other engines move on. It was only a matter of time for these brand new engines to catch up with the likes of Houdini. This version of Houdini that already had trouble keeping up with Stockfish 8, how would it do against a far better version? Let's see. All the details you need are on your screen, so let's shoot. This is again an 8 move opening book. Let's come back to see where these moves come from. E4, C5. Knight f3, d6, d4, takes, takes, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, bishop g5, queen b6, and after this knight maneuver, e6, queen d2, and finally this bishop responds, and the engines are on their own. What we're looking at, by the way, is the Richter Rouser of the Sicilian. It's a very popular line of the Sicilian, and it's in fact a very sharp line. Stockfish went for long, and Houdini did the same in terms of getting the king to safety. What we see is a very, very strong recipe to an exciting start. It nearly always is when you get sides to cast on opposite sides of the board. King b1, and rook d8, looking to somehow charge after this queen. Just look here, and there is always something to learn. What do you make of this bishop exit to e2 to try and entice the queen to take? What does the engine do? It's exactly how Houdini played it. Rook f1, and what if this pawn also comes off? Rook g1 hunting down the queen. You can't really grab this pawn. Why not? Rook h1. And go for this special attack. And this is how easy you drop the queen and the aim. Sometimes we make these variations look easy. And often they are. Do they work with engines? They do, but not as easily as with what you saw. After rook f1, no engine will go for this guy on g2. Do this. Rook g1, and let's see if queen h3, rook f1, knight back to base, and this queen on h3 can't be attacked that easily. But still, there's an amazing combo here. Find it, you can safely log off and do something else. Is it bishop takes e7? Nope, look at this. It's this very daring takes on f7. Arrest the rook. And the reason for this is to get the attack on the queen. After this, bishop bites the dust. You do not take the queen, but this check first, and this is how you gain the queen. To a rook offer. To gain the queen in this way can't be <laughs> bad at all. Let's see how Houdini handles the situation. The engine backed off the queen to where she came from. And there is something already in this position which Stockfish is going to exploit. Check this out, guys. Takes, takes, and I will explain this takes with a pawn. If the bishop takes, if you hand over the rook, queen h6, and the target is first, this pawn on f6. Knight e7, and rather than capture on f6, it's a far, far better and stronger response. If you know what that rook sacrifice does, you would easily go for it. 
How can you exploit the king's side? It has to be very easy. Every single piece black has is offside. And this is a problem. Rook d3, knight g6. Well, let's do this differently. Not rook d3, but h4 first. If now knight g6, there is h5. And if knight e5, how do you penetrate? Rook d3 is no longer possible, but you may not even need it. Knight d4, queen c7, and the move of the day has to be this knight response. It's an insane attack and forcing. If you don't take, there is a checkmate on g7. After the knight is arrested, it's all about this knight access to d5. Queen d7 runs into this, this fork. And you know, it's not too much about losing the queen, but the game. King to the very edge. And if you don't like the queen, you can put an end to this game through this response. And let's hear it. So when Houdini captured, this is how the engine did it. This is any better, slightly. Queen h6 and knight straight into e5. And how do you get this knight out of e5? You offer the rook, of course. Let's see where the game takes us. Question is whether it is safe to arrest this rook. Houdini did. Stockfish is looking to push this pawn and mate on h7. Theoretically, this is extremely easy, but how does this work in practice? Bishop back attacking the queen led to the elimination of this pawn. The question you need to ask and answer is whether white has enough compensation. Black has a few issues. It's called peace mobility or the opposite. Black has nothing going. If it doesn't get the chance to develop, it will suffer. For now, the engine is faced with another problem. Houdini has no option but to cover this pawn on f7. The two moves that do this are queen c7 and rook d7. This is how Houdini did it. Going for a lift, a rook lift is very risky, but this knight on b3 will be in time to intercept the queen on the first. So Stockfish went for it, h5, this check and bishop g7 and here is where there is a strike back it's trying to retaliate and let me tell you why this takes on h5 for example we'll run into this check rook back and we know it will be a mistake to grab this pawn on g2 e5 is the answer and by opening up the diagonal what you see is chaos it's a very difficult position to assess. If you take away this pawn and you do this with this pawn and not with the bishop, what does this knight attack on the rook do? If the bishop is arrested with feather ideas of grabbing the rook to checkmate the white king, you will regret it. Queen takes check. It's not a checkmate, but does the job quite nicely. With the rook now being protected, king up the board, and when Mr. Rook is eliminated, there is still some work required. You can afford to go bishop d7 without fearing for the bishop. Take him, and after the rook is removed with a check, black jumps into the lead. Go knight e1, and if queen h3, this rook attack is all you would ever need. Rook g8, and knight e4, and it's game over. Queen h4 runs into this attack, and though at first sight appears the knight falls. This is not as bad as it looks. Knight in with this fork, and the big lady also falls. And <laughs> for what? For a lousy knight. Whatever combination we try for Houdini, the engine falls short. So after bishop g7, it wasn't queen takes, but Stockfish returns the rook to the first. h4 and Stockfish doesn't care about this single pawn. Just looking at the bigger picture, it went g4. a5 and really going for it. You can't simply allow a4. Two ways to block this attack are a4 and e5. Stockfish went for option number one. 
Queen back to challenge the Queen led to this adjustment. Houdini has somewhat managed to come out of this big problem with one piece. Having calculated e5 to open, the diagonal does not look good. The engine to control this square. Let me make one point clear. It's not looking to remove this guy on h2. Stockfishing without his normal business as usual. It pushed on with this guy. Basically secures h4 if it needs him. Queen f8, what does Stockfish do? Is unbelievable. Simply unbelievable. It gave up one rook just like that. And now it goes on again with rook number two. The engine placed him here. Blunder or no blunder? It has to be a blunder. But probing deeper, we might have a brilliancy rather than a blunder. If the rook is given up for this bishop, after e5 blocking the mate on h7, there comes this knight charging up the board. Stockfish has a great attack potential, but has the engine got enough to do the job? Look at this position, it's totally crazy. One hardly you get to see. This happens only in engine games. You cannot stop 97, but at least you would need to hand over this rook. But is this what Stockfish is aiming for? Let's try rook b8. And now we're looking at something else. What does this special attack do? Rook c7, and not takes, but this check takes, and not takes just yet, but this check. King up the board, and just look at this queen's inability to do anything about this pawn. If you don't hand over the queen for the pawn, he will be transformed into a brand new queen. Okay, I hope this proves enough to showcase the removal of the rook spells the beginning of the end. Houdini is very capable of working out this trap and we need not forget it is equal or as powerful as the likes of Leela. And yet, I must have cursed it. If you are looking for a classic blunder, this has to be it. This is how Houdini played it. It has nothing to do with a five, or maybe this was to lure the knight to grab this pawn. If it was, it was not going to work. Rook h6 and now b5 to rip open the queen side. But how far does a move like this gets you? His pawn came off, but how? It was the pawn that did the job. Queen g7 in this game is giving me real nightmares. What is Houdini trying to do? Whatever it has cooking is extremely risky. Once this move materialized, can you afford to let this pawn take with a check? Apparently, yes. Rook e7, forget about f7, a5, and h4. If you were to take something, which pawn is it going to be and why? Stockfish went for this line of play. It's a brilliant reply. The knight's next stop is c6, unless he stops it, and it does. Look at this, guys. Or better, let me have thought you the opportunity to chip in. Any ideas how Stockfish took control of this game? This is what it did. What's the trick? It's here. Get rid of the queens. And there comes this rook tumbling down. It's not game over though yet, is it? There is more than meets the eye here. Grab the knight. Grab the bishop and now go on to arrest this pawn. Even if this pitch unfolds, with this knight backing off to safety, this is game over. What we saw was very different. It was the same until this point. Sorry guys, I must be dreaming of having a nightmare. We need to come to this point. When the queen was attacked, Huni does not engage, but comes up with this return. Blunder or no blunder? It has to be one and a big one too. G7, got the queen attacked, but there is a way out. Both ways work, actually. This is the outcome of option number one. The outcome of option number two is how the game was played. Takes, takes, 
this check, King takes, and we have exactly the same thing down to the very last move. Next, follow this taking on h2. And Houdini will try and run this pawn all the way to this side. What was stopping Stockfish from doing the same thing? Absolutely nothing. b6, but to this push to expose the rook. Stockfish was not amused. Rook d8, rook f7, and this bishop repositioning, and it's all a matter of sorting things out. d4, knight back to the first, and Houdini tries it, and why not? Bishop g4, putting the brakes on the pawn, led to this bishop to reposition, but does this initiative drop this pawn on d4? If Stockfish could talk, he would have said thank you very much, because this is what it did. Bishop back and c4, and he can smell the end. Rook f4 chasing after the bishop was the way to self-destruction. Stockfish could easily have removed this pawn, and yet it doesn't. This is what it did. g5, and only now this pawn was eliminated. Rook back to scare off the bishop, walked right into this check. King to the corner, rook e7, and it is like he has a cloud on top of his chip. It went for it. Why? This was the idea. When the pawn went, this guy also disappeared, but Stockfish has too many pieces and does not worry. Knight up the board, bishop f2, and knight charging after the rook. And we're looking, if not for resignation, at that adjudication rule. Rook h6, bishop f5, and every single Stockfish piece is perfectly positioned on the chessboard. When Houdini went for this course of action, it was pointless. b4 and king g8 led to this response, and with Houdini not engaging but trying this, this was also the very last move we saw in this game. It was quite a very convincing win by Stockfish, and it shows not just in the yellow difference between the two engines, but in how each engine performs. Looking at today's thumbnail, Everything is self-explanatory. Houdini, in its current state, is simply not matched to a better, faster, and much more refined engine. It's a mystery Houdini 6.03 can still fight that well, and that it has the strength to even put up a fight like this. But there is a big but here. With it being so neglected, is it a surprise it is reaching the end of the road? More to come from this division, so until you soon everyone, this is your chess puzzler.